holy shit, you, if you haven't got into the forum, you're missing the fuck out right there's, now, let me tell you. Li- this, this 48 hours left. Two holy days. Shit. Two days. That's one day and one day. Don't be a moron. Get in there. After... <laughs> How dare you? You know he sounds like the guy from uh, from uh, Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, yeah. Q Q Bo Diggly. Yeah, there you go. What was his uh, name? Uh, Roscoe Pico. Roscoe Pico. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, so uh, two days left to get free forum access. This is how you do it. You get on mindpumpmedia.com and you sign up for either the RGB bundle, which is Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. Nine months planned out for you. Exercise programming, expert exercise programming, or you could take it a step further. You can include Maps Prime, which teaches you how to prime your workout. Also has fortification workouts that helps correct muscle imbalances, and it has some Maps Anywhere. Maps Anywhere is the equipment-free Maps program, a great bridge between programs, or a great workout when you don't have access to a gym. Those are included in our Maps Super Bundle, the Cadillac of bundles. Either one of them, you get forum access for free. We're only offering this for two more days. That's it. After that, it ain't happening again. Mindpumpmedia.com. Get on it! If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Do you know what had me <clears throat> laughing for two hours the other day? What? what? Huh. I was remembering the song that Justin sang at the beginning of that guy's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh, I can't. Dude, that was so I, fucked I, up. I, I don't even remember I can't it. wait for it to air oh, because I, I was telling Katrina the other day, right? I was like, I'm actually really excited uh, to hear that episode. Actually, this is a great way to get the, get the kid to to pressure him to to release that song. Oh, we'll have his, all the fans I'll be, bombard. I'll be disappointed. We'll have the fans there. bombard him. Like, bro, you need to step your game so, up. You're going to get on this level. Yeah, bro. No, you're going to be posting that shit fast. We've done like four episodes since we no, fucking he's talked. A, he's a great kid, too. Yeah. He's got he's got a podcast called You How just to- say that because he's Italian and he's good looking. <laughs> you're so fucking biased, what, dude. You, not, you don't think he's a good he's a, kid? He's, he's a good I, kid. He's a great. He's a great kid. kid. I have a, wait a second, how can you say that about him? What do you? How do you know? From he what I know. How do you know he doesn't kill little, met little kids and shit? Wow, dude? you don't oh, know that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he doesn't do that. Well, you've only yeah. met him for a little. I'm pretty sure he doesn't either. But I mean, yeah. just come right out and say some shit. Like I that. think he's, he's a good handsome. Kid. We can prove that. We saw he's him. He's handsome. He's intelligent. <laughs> he's a go getter. Right. Yeah. So right. so based on those things, he seems like a good kid. <laughs> yeah. But he's got a podcast called How to Do Your Twenties, and he came here. He wanted to interview us, and we're like, sure, we'll be on your podcast because. We like people who are trying to grow their business. He's a young guy, you know, he's, he's, he's a go getter. So it's like, sure, come on up. Translation, I like to hear myself talk. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, so he's got a humble attitude about it, which I really appreciate. So he comes in and that's he, rare. And he shares, <laughs> yeah, right. he shares, yeah, I mean, he's making a product and it's made out of like macadamia, macadamia nuts and other stuff. It's like a, it's like a nut butter and that's what it's called, something nut butter, right? <laughs> so he okay, I remember in. the song now. By the way, it's delicious. <laughs> By the way, it's delicious. So he yeah. brings it in. We're trying. We're like, wow, this is really fucking good. Yeah. So he Justin goes right into a commercial. Well, so here's the thing. Like, I had to. I don't. Think, I was compelled. I don't think people realize like when we when we do podcasts, we just go and there's no prep. We just roll. Right. Into, yeah. He was so, waiting for like, uh, are we gonna start? This? <laughs> so right away, Justin starts singing a song about this nut butter. Yeah. But it's the most inappropriate song I've ever it, heard in my entire like, life. It went totally in left field, and I, like his girlfriend was in here and everything. I, I hope like, he plays oh, it, no. dude. I hope he plays it. If I, you, I just went for it. Find, you know. Find Find this podcast and uh, how to do your twenties and pressure him to release <laughs> the song. Oh, I, poor guy! You, what are you saying? If he like, wants to. If he wants, it's fine. I'll Maybe put, we'll get a copy. You know, what were you saying? I'll put table. nut butter on your I'll face. Put, so <laughs> don't even don't even try. I don't remember. It. Share it, I, it was something along it was, those lines, and though. it was better because yeah. it was off the cuff, and then we just went yeah. right into it. the fu- the part I thought was comical was we must have talked for five minutes before we uh, let him introduce his own show. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's all you want. Have you ever had people on here that are take over your show that are such assholes that take over your interview? Right. That was. Literally, what was going on that whole time? We don't I shut know. the fuck up. Yeah, you know. that well, that was an example for he sure. He walked that. right into a hornet's nest. But I'm I'm excited to I'm excited to actually see because I we that's the first time I think. Well, that's not true because we did that with <clears throat> we did it with Ben, but it was different with Ben, right? That was there was a different there was a different vibe. Well, no, Ben. Think about all of our interviews that we've done. Right, we've done Ben. Yeah. Ben's interviewed us. We uh, Kyle's interviewed us. Um, 
Uh, I was interviewed what, by myself. On that Smart we had Brendan Shapati. You he know, interviewed us. Mm-hmm. yeah, I'm talking about all the ones that we've done together, right? And this that one was a different feel than all of them. Yeah. Why? We had, well, why? Well, we do what I thought was good. We dove into some. We dove into uh, a little bit of everything. Like, well, we didn't first just, of all, I don't think we were sober. But number two, <laughs> we were. I know you laugh, but it's maybe it's true or maybe it's not. Maybe it was. Uh, maybe it's also it's not. It was in Speak our. It was in our studio. That was the second thing. And number three, we used to get messed up when there was another person. Like we're not good at sharing. Yeah. Each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's a, it's a problem we have. Uh, yeah, it is. And but now we're really good with our chemistry when there's another person in the mix now. So now we're cool. So he came in and mm. we just we just went and it was a good time. Yeah. It was. We had a great time. But we didn't stop. I mean, I think we might have talked too much. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm, I'm interested kind to hear that because that's what that's Katrina would happen. She will. <laughs> she <laughs> asked that. She's like, "Do you guys yeah. like, talk too much? You know, you can ramble." Like she was giving me that. I'm like, "Who said yeah, that to you?" That did happen, Katrina. Yeah. And I said, "Well, we don't ramble. I don't think so. I said Sal does that a lot, but I don't really." But honey, then we right? cut you <laughs> off because I'm tired of hearing you. You know, you know? what's like, funny? Like, that's my job. You know what's funny? I'm I'm aware enough to know that I have a tendency to, to like I want to do that, but I'm not aware enough to know if I do it more than Adam. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm serious. No, that's because, why I'm here. Because to me, it, like I think you might beat me, but I don't know. Yeah. I wonder who's the more who's, who. Well, I think more of the rambler. Justin's probably has the best perspective since he sits yeah. across from the room trying to get a word in. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I just like to. <laughs> who rambles more? Um, you can't do that, dude. He's he's too political now. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, he's like, be PC. Get out of here. Get of the fuck out of here. <laughs> he worked with you forever. He's gonna pick. He's gonna say me because he's it's your not like, friend. Well, back then it would I'm matter, done, like because I had something to do with his paycheck. Now I don't have anything to do with this. I'm she's gonna say what the fuck he wants right now. I mean. I mean, there's elements there for both you guys. Oh, you know, don't you can be get PC. on a rant and I'll be PC because like, who's harder to get a word in? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it depends <laughs> on the topic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, because oh, really? if it's well, mm, this is interesting because like it, it depends. A lot of times, I know like if I if I interject and if I have a thought and I want to kind of boom get my opinion out there and like i have to do it like forcefully because that's just a survival mechanism <laughs> I've, I've acquired over you know two <laughs> years like i just like you know this is what i have to do now you know like, i spear head my way in this conversation um but like there's a lot of times i don't want to do that because there's times where sal like he's he's on this you, you see this like momentum building like when he's getting on to uh he's striking a nerve he's, he's kind of finding his voice within his train of thought or like kind of going down this entire train of thought uh and it's it's like i I get kind of sucked into it you know if if it's really uh engaging and so i don't want to fuck that up and so like i'll I'll pull back and then like he can ramble but sometimes it's important that he rambles but if it's not important it's something i'm not interested in then i'll fuck it up right same thing with you (laughs) like you know it's it's, like a wrench yeah it's like um you know i can listen you know sometimes like personal experience and, and these these stories and you know, like I have stories where I can't even tell the whole damn story. You know, that's my problem. But, you know, Adam is a pro- professional at telling stories. Like, I'll tell you what, like you got like just an endless supply of stories. And so I have to like kind of cut through the fat of it and be like, okay, no, this is a great story. And so I am I let you like keep going and going and going. So yeah. really what you should pay attention to is when I come in. Yeah. Because that's what tells you if you're rambling. <laughs> well, I kind of, I think I kind of do. I think we do. Uh, I've gotten better about when you do interject of stopping. Yeah. I might be, even yeah. when I'm in a, I might, I have a train of thought, I'm going somewhere. You guys have gotten a lot better at that, by the way, which yeah. is, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, feel like, yeah. I feel like we you do. You know it. what I notice now? Because when we have a guest, Adam sits right next to me, right? Yeah. I hate so, that too, by the way. Just so you know, that's a, that's not fair that I have to be the one at all of us that gets well, put in a that's new That's why spot. you guys are a little closer than with me. No, you know, I, I don't. I feel that I don't, like, distance from you guys. You fuckers you know I mean? have your own seats that but you've I'm been okay in for two it. years. I'm the guy, well, let's, okay, back up to when we first got the studio and we're talking about, I'm the one. Finish your thoughts because I'm going to clown on you. I'm the one. I'm the one who wanted like a his own custom chair, my rhinestone <laughs> mic. Like I'm like, this is mine. This yeah, is yeah. mine. You're the one right? that gives and it up to all right, the guests oh, right away, yeah. every way. And then I'm the one who has uh, to give his fucking chair up. I'll tell you what. Next time mm. we travel somewhere, and if you give one of us the master bedroom, we're gonna give you a special. Then one. you get to sit in your fucking chair. Oh well, there's <laughs> all right, motherfucker. There's a reason. Ooh, there's a reason a for point, that. There's, there's a really. Let's, let's talk about that. There's like this okay. unwritten rule. Let's talk about this. That, that Adam gets the. Yeah, fucking see, well, I give him that one because he said. 
messed it up. Thank you. Yeah. There's an unsaid he's behind the the structure. Of this like, is not a we're mind. staying at this house, so I'm like, okay, you get the master. Bedroom. This is there's yeah. an unsaid rule yeah. that goes on in like when it comes to book. And I've been this friend right where we book trips, and I've been with friends that have way more money than me and can book better trips and places for than me. And I've been with friends that are the complete opposite of that. And none of that matters on who gets the master bedroom. What matters is the mother who took, motherfucker who took the responsibility to get the place, book the place, pay for the place, whatever it may be, even if it's coming from the same pot, right? So it's coming from our money. So it's not really like I'm paying for it and you guys aren't paying for it. Yeah. We evenly pay for it. But I did the legwork to make sure that it happened. So if mm. you did that, I would automatically submit that right away. 100%. You wouldn't even have to say a word. If I knew that a, thing, a trip was handled and booked and I didn't have to do it, I would just assume my role. I'd be looking for the second best room right away. As soon as I got in there, I'd be like, second best. Where's, where's the second, second season? Yeah, yeah. Where's the second yeah. best room? Yeah. I'm going to it because I know Sal took yeah. care of all these arrangements. He's getting the master Throw the bedroom. backpack on it. You guys don't Clean. want me to book the room. Well, exactly, right? No, so, exa- yeah. Yeah, you're terrible. But it's kind of funny. I love, I do love that. I, know, we, I don't care. Nobody we, cares. Well, yeah. no one does. We never had that no, conversation. That's no, nobody gives a shit. That's one thing. I'll it's say great, this. Dude. I'll say this thing right now. As big as our egos are, we're all cool with someone having a bigger ego at some point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's all good. Like you. I mean, and it's not, not. I'm not making a dig. Like nobody cares. You have your. You have the the master bedroom with the you know the big TV and stuff all the time. <laughs> there's nothing wrong. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. I will say I this. I love though. that you called him out on that. I though. will That's say this great. though, yeah. Adam, because you sit next to me when we have a guest. You have to move chairs. You sit right next to me, and then there's there's this funny di- this thing that happens sometimes where. He sits forward, so I can't see the guest. So then I move forward, then he moves forward. <laughs> before, you know, back before, <laughs> before you know it, we're sitting like I fucking idiots. I noticed that too, yeah. 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 yeah I hate really this really angle. Really leaned in. This angle is awful because you have both the arms yeah. and you have the mic yeah. that close. So in your So I don't get this, yeah, I don't get this eye, like the, the eye contact I get with you. That's important to me. When I'm talking to somebody me and I'm too. into a conversation, I got to look you in the fucking eye. If I got to look you through a fucking eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel like when we're doing it. I feel like I'm like looking through the screen. To see this guy, and I don't do well with that. Yeah. I don't like it at all. So I'm, uh, you know what? I can't wait for us to finish that front room area up so we can do some interviews out there. And I, I do want to change the way this is set up because we do have a guest and we have more and more guests now. And that's not a fun place for me. Why? Hmm. Because it's just, it's not comfortable to interview It's from the spot. best one for me, though. I, I, mean, I don't it. mind sitting next to you. I know I rat and I talk shit about that. That doesn't bother no, me. No, I at like all. sitting here. Actually, I think I have the best chair, though, for real. Of course you do. Because I feel like I can look at Justin. And then I can look and, at you. And, and let's be honest. Hey, buddy. And I can, like, I can like where I look is where the like I can make it look like. Yeah. So if I look yeah. over here, you're not getting my attention anymore. See what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you so t- I could easily be like, nope. Yep. You, have like, assumed, today, you have assumed you have assumed this position in all every every place we've been from Doug's house to the other studio, mm-hmm. this studio, mm-hmm. and when we, even mm-hmm. when we eat dinner, you assume the head of the table. You know what? That, really? that, that's yeah. your mafia genetics. It's okay, you know? I mean, you're in the back. The that's where, sh- that's where. Yeah. yeah, you have you have that the 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 head of the table, head of the room. That's okay. You can say like that. Yeah, fine. As Damn it, like, we're calling it as all lo- out. As long as I get the master yeah. bedroom yeah. and the fucking sunken wow. towel, I'm cool with that. Wow. <laughs> I love this. This is fun. <laughs> Meanwhile, Justin doesn't give a fuck. No, see, now you guys realize I really sincerely don't give a fuck. No, 100%. You're probably the easiest. Yeah. Well, no, Doug. Look I'd at say, my outfit. Doug, mean, has had to, sake. Doug has had to doesn't sleep, make sense. sleep on a fucking toddler's bed before. when we. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> Doug is the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the most gangster and doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to sleep in the kids' room. I remember. I remember. It's a fucking bunk I remember when. Brianna first started booking the rooms uh, in the first two rooms that she Doug. booked, you know, she you go off of when you first are going to the VRBO, you look at it and it says like, oh, it sleeps eight. So we only have four, so we have no problem. Yeah, but that's, a, they, you know, it's bullshit, right? It's like- Because yeah. there's a bunk bed. Yeah, and they count queens as two, so it's like, oh, then we yeah. get to the house and find out like, oh shit, Doug is uh, in the- He's in, in the garage. Yeah, like this, uh, so fuck. he's been the biggest trooper when it comes to now. Of course, now that's settled. It's been like, listen, they ha- there has to be at least four bedrooms. Like legit minimum. beds. And now five, right? So now yeah. that we had the crew with us, so it's just- I, uh, that I do notice the, the yeah, and me we end up sharing a bathroom usually. You always get your own bathroom. Yeah, that's this part of master bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then usually we have to share a bathroom. And you know, one of these days I want you to share a bathroom with Justin. Just one time. <laughs> Come on, man. One fucking time. <laughs> Is he that bad? I want you to share a bathroom it's not with Justin. That bad. In the we morning. Have before. In the morning. Oh, in the morning. It's, well, that's my special time. It's, <laughs> Why are you calling Can me? Can I just out, tell dude? you, bro? Yeah. I first well the good news is I'm the, always the first one up. I, I typically get, I am the first problems. I'm usually the first one to wake up, so I've learned now to go in there real quick. Yeah, you got to get it in. Yes, before the sin. You don't want to go after <laughs> Justin goes you know in what I'm there. Saying? You are the first one up. Doug and I are probably the latest up. I don't know who gets. I'm, he's well, he the only goes, one I can talk to. He doesn't at, like, go to two bed at two in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, no. 
Is I'm it, up. I'm up till two in the morning too. I'm just not up with. Oh no, we we stay up all pretty late. Mm-hmm. I just like I just wake up early. I'm ready to party. You, you are I mean? an early. Did birdie. I wake you guys? Have I woken you guys up with yes, loud music? You yet? have. That's right. You did that in Sacramento. You fucking asshole. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Hence why you're not in the room next. You, yeah, exactly. You lost all privileges <laughs> you know, to sleep near me. So so can I just <laughs> tell you that. that's like part of my signature. Like if I go out with a bunch of people. And we're spending the night somewhere. I'm always, I typically am the one that needs the least amount of sleep. But, the when, asshole. I, but when I wake up in the morning, yeah. I like to put loud music on and wake everybody up because I think it's. Fucking I'm hilarious. cleaning. Woo! Hey guys, get out of here. But I did it once with you guys, and so I, I turned on the music hella loud. Nobody got out of the room, so it didn't really work. So I'm like, this is not that fun. So I turned it down, and then when you fuckers woke up, I got the dirtiest looks from all of you cocksuckers, <laughs> and I was like, well. Probably shouldn't do that. I'm not going to do that anymore. Mm. Yeah. Doug. Uh, well, our body language said it all. Doug, bring this qual on because I know these guys have kids to pick up from school. being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quad. First up is Lindsay is back. Carpool. I'm glad she's back. Yeah. Yeah. Lindsay is working out fasted and making good gains, but is there an advantage to eating before working out? This is, you know, a lot of people- You haven't talked about meal time in a long time. So check this out. I just posted this. I'm going to look it up right now. I just posted this on my Instagram page yesterday, I think it was yesterday or two days ago. No, it was yesterday. A study was just published uh, in the Journal of Translational Medicine that compared- Two groups of bodybuilders. So this is what's interesting about it. They took people who were trained, who had trained for at least five years. And one of the problems I have with studies that are done on things like protein intake and exercise or on whatever. On newbies who never train, of course their body responds like crazy, it's right? It's difficult, right? But they picked uh, 34 people with five years of experience. They split them down the middle. One half uh, ate frequently every two or three hours. The other group limited their food intake to eight hours. So what they did was is they it was basically intermittent fasting. Like they ate as much as they wanted or whatever, but they could only eat within this limited time frame. At the end of the study, what they found were insignificant changes across the board, except the group that ate within the eight hour period. In other words, they all they gained the same amount of muscle, same amount of strength, everything was the same, except the group that ate within the eight hour period got leaner, much leaner, uh, statistically leaner, uh, significantly leaner than the other group, and the calories and macros were about the same. Now, the study's not perfect. It's a small group. It's 34 people. It's self-reported. So, And that's the problem with human studies is that, is that they don't lock them in a room and, and count every single thing that they put in their mouth. But it is a study that is pointing the same direction of other studies, which is showing that intermittent fasting – by itself, independent of calories, uh, it, it results in fat loss. Um, and this is another study that shows that you don't reduce your muscle mass or strength or performance. So here's what I tell people. I tell people like when it comes to things like meal timing, like it's down the list, right? It's way down the list. Like, you know, make sure your nails are clipped before you lift. Like that, I mean, do that first. It's more important. performance gains. I mean, I mean, literally though. Like, and here's here's the and the reason why I'm like that is because I was the opposite. Because I I believed all that stuff that I was being fed that like that hmm. was like the anabolic window and I needed to do all this stuff and it was like, but yet I was missing on sleep. I was pumping my body full of all this shit. Like you know, I, all this other stuff going on that I wasn't fixing. All the big rocks. And I was so hung up on getting this this optimal performance. It's going to build more muscle for my body because I was so fixated on that. In reality, like it's so minuscule as far as what it does for you is is in your ultimate goal, whether it be burning fat and losing body fat, or yeah. if it's building muscle. Either way, well, for your ultimate goal, I think like you know, if you're a competitor, an athlete, you know, and you want to like optimize sure. like, a very specific sure. event in that game, you know, there's a process to that where you can time it, be more sensitive to these you know nutrients. 
nutrients that you're consuming. So that way you're, you're sort of fasted going in and then you eat at a time. But I'll tell you like, this. Boom. This is where you respond at your ultimate performance. But yeah, this is where I flip people on their head, though, in the bodybuilding community was I was the guy who didn't give a shit about that. Yeah. And still competed at the professional yeah, level. Can, and I did that to make a point yeah. that you don't have to eat like all structured like this. I would skip like it was for me when I'm when I'm bulking and I'm building. Right. So if I'm building, I'm trying to eat in a caloric surplus. It used to it was uh, advantageous for me to eat four to six times. I'm a 220, 230 pound guy training hard, moving a lot. That's a lot of calories. If how many too- calories would you try to eat when you were gaining? Like 4,500. So yeah, that, so you'd have to 4,500 yeah. 5,000 You're not going to calories. do that with two meals. You're not. And, and it's and it's ridiculous to think you're going to. And even three meals is tough to get that many calories. Do the math on that. That's a lot of, that's a, you know, a 1,500 calorie meal every meal if you just do it three times. That's fucking a lot. That's a lot, yeah. So I, I would eat four, six times a, a, a day, not because there was like this advantage to it other than getting those calories mm-hmm. in it was tough to get. And then when it's I went to- easier in your stomach. And then when I that, switched yeah. to c- cutting for a show, I just, I started dropping meals off. And it wasn't like I was worried about like anything. And then, I, and then, so rather than keeping the same number of meals, you just cut two of them out. Yeah, okay, well, which I, is smarter? I would strategically yeah. do it. I do, I do like one. You know, I'd cut one yeah. out, run for a while like that. You know, and then I'd also be slightly increasing my movement. So if I was averaging fifteen thousand steps a week, which would be a pretty average uh, hmm. week for me when I'm training, I would drop one meal, increase my steps by two thousand steps a day, and that subtle increase in movement and that decrease of dropping the meal. Off, I mean, it would drop me good for two weeks. I'd do that again. Like, now, you know, that all being said, there <clears throat> is some very interesting science that's coming out. Uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick has talked about this We're in these mouse models where when they they limit their eating to a time, uh, like a feeding window yeah, of, uh, of time. Like eight hour window. They or... actually build more muscle and strength uh, and lose more body fat with the same fucking calories. Now, these are, these are animal models or mouse models. Some human studies are showing that this may be the case. So in other words, fasting has benefits that, and I'm, we know the health benefits, okay? So there's obvious health benefits, but there may be some performance benefits, mm. fat loss, muscle gain benefits that are independent of the calories and macros. In other words, if all things being equal, all the important things being equal, like Adam's saying, when you include you know, time-restricted eating, you seem to have some interesting advantages. Now, from the outside, personally, this makes perfect sense. Like When you eat food, there is a process of things that your body goes through to digest and assimilate yeah. this food, and it only makes sense to give that it would be beneficial to give your body a break. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like let your let body it not fully have go to- through the process and then reintroduce it after you've at least been able to process the food and get it down at a certain well, level. Eating itself is slightly inflammatory. Yeah. Well, there was another study that showed that super frequent eating, where they had people eat eight meals a day with the same macros and same calories, was inflammatory. Actually showed uh, sl- rises in inflammatory markers. So, so again, th- again, on your being anecdotal, like he, this is one of these situations where I would. That was another reason why I liked pushing to six meals was because I would just start to let my body get adapted to this like frequency of meals eating it, just enough in time for me to switch and go the total opposite. Yeah. And I, I would totally see a huge difference. My body would respond right away because it was so used to getting fed on this regular regular time, and then I'd go the other direction, and then I'd go back the other way. So I was I was constantly doing this to get my my body to respond. And I feel like if you're somebody who always eats, like same well, thing it goes. Feels with- like you're challenging your appetite too. I mean, at that point, like when you're. I mean, you're getting used to this sort of a schedule. You're taking it away. It seems like you get a lot of benefit from that from a me- metabolism perspective, right? Oh, like, that's you challenging and that's like what that. I, that's what I mean. That's yeah. what I what I would feel. And I, like I said, I know this is anecdotal because we're just talking about me and what I've experienced myself. But I've experienced this too with when I teach clients, and I and I would put them on the same type of regimen where I have you eating consistently, just so you can learn about macros, learn about your food. You see all the stuff. Then I also teach you how to use that as a tool to take away from that, and then see how your body responds see how you feel connect those dots like to me that's that's the takeaway because i think there there's a there's a, another other side of this coin because we talk we talk about all the benefits of fasting right well i also see this and we get this on our forum i see this a lot where people are like oh i love fasting and then now it becomes this every single day they yep, fast yep, yep. and not to say that there's anything wrong with that but i'm just saying you're probably not getting the same benefits as the guy or girl who intermittently puts it in there and goes back and well, forth well even besides that you can fast too much you know there, it can cause a stress response in the body uh, women in particular mm-hmm. uh, if you're in adrenal fatigue you probably don't want to be fasted 
uh, for long periods of time. So it's not great for everybody, but I think there are ways that people can incorporate some of the concepts and get some and get some benefit from it. But the question is, is working out fasted an advantage or disadvantage? Uh, you know, if you're doing a hardcore endurance event, you probably don't want to do it. If you're just lifting weights in the gym, I don't think it makes a big difference. Yeah. Next question is from Shane yeah. Kelly. <clears throat> What's harder to give up, coffee, sugar, or alcohol? You know what? If you Ooh. if you throw if you throw all cigarettes in there, drugs. you have all the fucking legal drugs think, that people use. I think yeah. it was directed towards us personally. It was. What's harder for us to give up? But yeah. just to, uh, not to go. And, I mean, this is kind smoking of, been hard for you. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is all this is kind of related. Like if you, it's interesting. You know, I I look. I've been looking at this more recently for myself because. I have found that I've been consuming too many stimulants uh, for too long. I've been having too much coffee uh, too frequently. Now, coffee is very good for you. There's lots of health benefits, but that does contain caffeine, and caffeine can be overdone. This is quite individual from one person to the next, but I found with myself, I, I realized I was having too much caffeine, and I needed to reduce it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's funny when you look around, you see people like – it's like these legal drugs that we use to augment – you know, our, our, our reality or to push us to do things that our body may not want to do. Like I found myself drinking coffee to feel normal. Mm -hmm. Once I realized like, wait a That's minute. That's a problem. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not getting a benefit from coffee. I'm I'm just making You're dependent me, on it at that point. Then yeah, I said, to, okay, to that's keep operating exactly. At that level, and yeah. I'm like, I'm cutting it. I'm cutting yeah. it down. I've noticed I'm, the same thing with coffee. It's just like there's definitely a point where you start to see like everything sort of levels off, and you're not getting that same response like you initially got. It, it's more just like, okay, I have to do this, so I'm not super sluggish well, and I, walking around. Well, I realized with myself, like sugar and alcohol are not a big deal. I never, I barely have sugar and I never drink, so I don't care about those. Coffee had become such a regular staple of my morning that uh, when I started thinking about like, okay, I need to reduce it, I, I got this like visceral reaction to me like, no, yeah, I got to have my coffee in the morning. And then I said, wait a minute, why yeah. am I reacting so strongly to just – a fucking drink like no. i should be able to say no i'm not gonna have any coffee more. coffee and i would say is definitely the strongest for me as well uh because i you know you attach certain things to it like yeah there are some health benefits but it, you know it can get away from you and really like with coffee it's like i feel like i'm productive and like i associate all these like really yeah. positive things with it versus like sugar for me uh, yeah, I like flavor, but I've sort of trained myself out of like, I don't have like a, a response where I see something sugar and I'm like, yeah, like I stuff my face. You know, I don't have that. That was maybe when I was a kid, but, uh, the alcohol for me, like, the, I mean, I went through a period where it was like, yeah, you know, I wasn't like drinking all the time, but I was drinking enough to where I was like, why am I like, I was doing that to release a lot of stress. And mm -hmm. so I associated it with that, which became like, well, it's just like two drinks to kind of take the edge down. And, you know, I was depending on this to provide a, a sort of response. So I think, you know, that's where they can really start to get problematic. Yeah, I, th I think when you get to the point where you, you become fearful of eliminating something, uh, because you're you're attached to it, that's when you need to disconnect from it because mm -hmm. you are in a state of uh, you know it's a, it's a lesser state of addiction. It's kind of it is it really is you know it might not be crazy addiction, but there's definitely a level of addiction there to where sure. I think about the coffee and I think about cutting it out and it makes me <laughs> freak little, out. Ugh. Like oh wait a minute, I need I can't not have <laughs> coffee a little bit. And let me tell you something: Can you overdo caffeine and coffee? You better fucking believe it. In fact. I would venture to say that people that drink it regularly, daily, probably are at the point where they should probably reduce it. And and I'll say this too: there's nothing more often, uh, excuse me, awesome. I'm coming off and going right back on. Oh my god, coffee's <laughs> coffee's great when you go off of it for a while and then you drink it. Hello, like, old dude, friend. You're I, on fucking fire. Yeah. I put this together. Uh, god, when, I don't even remember. I mean, w one thing I I will say with the, with with addiction, like. I, I, I've been surrounded by addiction since I was a kid. So I've had it uh, in my family. I've seen it. I've seen it around friends. And then in adulthood, I've seen it in like really close people to me. And and on all levels too, from cigarettes to hard drugs to marijuana to, you know, coffee to all these things I've seen. And yeah, I said something like marijuana, even though it's not considered something that's addictive. But I, anything that I think that you 
uh, identify with or attach yourself to or becomes habitual, right? Where you can't break away from it. I don't give a fuck if it has chemical properties that are addictive or not. There's psychological properties that you become. Of course addicted. there are. So I, I've seen this firsthand a lot. So, and it's funny too, because I know, uh, you know, this is something that, and I think we talked about this in an episode before a little bit where we were kind of going back and forth and I was, and I remember I was challenging you that like, we're on different journeys, you know, you have your journey and you're going on, I have my journey I'm going on. And I've, I've like, uh, I've handled like addiction type demons and things like that when I was a kid and seeing it so much that I was so scared of it that now I have this and I'm, I'm lucky for this. I feel like I'm blessed that I went through that because I'm, I'm very, like, I reflect right away. Like if there's something that I'm enjoying, I have this ability to like right away, like question it. Like, wow, I really like this, you know, like this experience is awesome. And then I'm like, wow, this is awesome again. Like I catch myself doing that really early on mm -hmm. and I go like, Ooh, be careful. Ooh, this yeah. is something I can turn into a habit and I intermittently cycle off all those things. Now, if I'm being completely honest, the hardest for me is actually sugar or artificial sweeteners. Mm. The I, could, one, I could that's not a surprise. I could I could have told you that well, for sure. I, the, I out of all the ones that I and, and I and and I do. I like right now I'm I'm off of that completely and you know, I switch to iced tea and drink a ton of water. You'll notice I'm drinking way more water than I normally do and that's like part of that helps me go through that process. So I'm still really good about being aware of it and catching myself like, well, it's a tough one to moderate, right? If, you, a, it if is. you reintroduce it, like in, in any sort of level, it, it, it becomes this it, like burning thing like, Di in your head. Well, let me Diet, ask you this. Diet Cokes um, will, will, will grab me harder than caffeine. Any, I've done most drugs, why? right? I've done, huh? Why? Because I enjoy the taste. That, the, is it just the taste that you that you're super? Uh, like I'm, yeah, I'm asking why. Well, like, that I'm aware of because we, I mean we're still learning a lot about yeah. it, the, the addictive properties that could be attached. Because it's it. weird, right? It's weird how one person will be like. For me, it's the coffee right now. Yeah, no, uh, definitely coffee, and it's for not me. sugar at all. Um, and then for you, it's like. Well, it's, so it's this is my. Share. I'll tell you my theory on it. Okay, so growing up. Um, I could have, we had fucking cereal for dinner. I had candy all the time. Like I went through my teens and 20, always having sour patch, hot tamales, candy. And like I mm. ate candy every single day. I ate ice cream at childhood night. memories. With oh, that ton, associated ton. To it, yeah. So I have, I have a, a psychological side that I have attachment to it. I love sugar and the taste of sugar. I'm a carb fanatic, all those things. So I, I grew up my whole life. Now I'm an adult. Now I see all the things that it's caused and I have autoimmune issues and now I'm, and I've recognized that. So out of all of them, I, that one, I probably have the hardest time with or takes the most focus for me to do it mm -hmm. and be like, no, you set yourself on a path that you're going to completely, cause I'm also this, I also believe in balance too. I actually love the way diet coat tastes. I'd prefer it over a regular coat, which is why you see me drink the green ones when I drink them is that I like the cane sugar, but then I like the fact that it's got stevia. So it's not as like a regular Coke is way too sweet for me. Oh, I see. And then a diet Coke is that the, the level of sweetness in it is just right for me. And, and, and so I can get caught up in like allowing myself that in the diet a lot, especially when I got in competing and I became really clean about everything else and measuring. And then there was no, I was very strict about my macros and mm -hmm. calories. So that was like my one thing that I could have a diet Coke was like, Oh, so I connected that to, you know, this, this sweet relief from this. And yeah. so that is the hardest. Do you think if, uh, hmm. if diet Coke was known to reduce muscle gains, do you think you would have ever been as addicted to it or as connected to it? Absolutely. Because I- You, st you still would have. Yes, because I was already, you got to remember, I didn't start really training and even caring about that until I was 19, 20 years old. Uh, By that time, I was already- You were already on it. I'm already a mess. Yeah, I'm already, at, at, and at that time, yeah, you could, if you, I mean, obviously if it was like, if you told me like, yeah, for every bite of ice cream you have, you lose one pound of muscle. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if there was numbers like that came out, I would be like, like fuck oh this God, shit. I like, I don't, a tub. Yeah, I don't well, care. The, the reason why I'm asking is because I, I because both you and I, you know, had those, we wanted to gain weight and gain muscle all the time. Yeah. And so for me, like I didn't have an issue with sugar, but I definitely didn't avoid it because I'm like, fuck it. It's extra calories. Well, I need to gain weight anyway. That's where we're similar, right? You and yeah. I have very, we definitely have a lot of similarities with our insecurities. And, and I think we, I, we both connect there, but then there's definitely, we have different paths on that. We went and I, you probably weren't around as much addiction and abuse and stuff that I yeah. was around growing up. So that also gave me a different, like, perspective on all these things that and i think candy and sugar and things like that that was never demonized like you know coke and draw those are all bad like so i knew that and then i knew that addiction part of it but no one ever really like 
told me as a kid growing up that like, you know, this sugar thing could really head you down the wrong path mm-hmm. if you don't pay attention to this now. So that's why I think that's probably the hardest. Israel Granados, best tips for losing fat while maintaining muscle mass. This uh, a lot of people have challenged with this, uh, which is why watch out for intensity. This question keeps coming up too. This is probably like the third time, but it's because it, it's such like a, a sought after thing. It is because I think guys bulk up and gain a lot of weight, yeah. and then they go to cut, and so then they go in these long periods of calorie deficit and lots of cardio, and then they find that they lose lots of muscle and strength when they do this. So yeah, there's, here's a few clear, easy tips just from my end. Number one. Don't go into these excessively long, uh, crazy bulking and cutting periods. Uh, so instead Bad of going idea. like three months or four months of bulking and then you know three months of cutting mm-hmm. where you're gaining lots of- That's you, just an excuse to feed your addiction. Oh, big time. Like yeah. you don't want to- Just you, own it. Just you, own it. If, it. if you do it, own it. That's yeah. all I say. You know, I'm not going to tell you don't do that. I'm going to tell you if you're going to do that, own it. Yeah. You're well, fucking just feeding that, dude. Of don't. course. But <laughs> but let's if you want, if you're really focused on building muscle and staying lean, there is a benefit to bulking in the sense that there is an anabolic f- a benefit, but it doesn't last very long. So- you can bulk, but do it for a short period of time and then cut for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. And you'll find that you'll hold on to more muscle. Now, you're not going to get these dramatic weight shifts. So I'm not going to like gain 20 pounds in three months doing it this way, yeah. but I'm going to gain lean body mass. Well, the more the gradual increases and decreases, the better, right? They As are. going to approach it with well, that mentality. Yeah. And let's keep that in mind. longer though. Yeah. And this is where, and I love to talk about the psychology side of this, right? This is where people really fucking battle right here is because- your goal, right, is to build size. I literally was talking to a pro bodybuilder yesterday, good friend of mine, like been training for years and years and years, and he's telling me that he's talking about this new coach that he's with right now and the nutrition plan that they have a meeting. He's like take, breaking it down to me. So and I'm like, okay, okay, I get what he's doing. Okay, yeah, yeah. And like his his perception is like he he went up eight pounds on the scale. So this guy is like really helping. I'm like, whoa, dude, like. For as long as you've been in this, like you still you're connecting like still, a good yeah. a good plan and a diet just because you saw your scale go up eight pounds. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. your your macro flip, you just went went from going three hundred grams. I mean, no like grams of carbohydrates to like three hundred fifty grams of carbohydrates, and like you're probably you're thirsty. Of course, water. Getting, yeah, yeah, your yeah, sodium, like, your carbs just went up. You're probably thirsty more. Like, oh, duh. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you didn't just build. He didn't just switch you up and put five pounds of muscle no. on you. But like, that's people's perception of that, and they're they're connected to the scale. It's hard so for them much. to differentiate that. Yeah, yeah. So if you're not seeing like if okay i'm on this maps plan and they tell me i'm going to build the most muscle doing that but then three weeks goes by and you've only seen the scale go up a half a pound but yeah. your boy well, he's I'm running a bunch of burgers he's man. Running, i get jack he's running that one program and he's got like he's put 12 pounds on this last week but like the people but don't he was eating pizza and ham yes know, and, and, and people don't fries all people day don't yeah. under, and they and he and if you're somebody like us who wanted to be bigger that guy's filling his shirt out he Bro, looks bigger. i used to watch the scale religiously in fact I used to watch, and these are the games I used to play with myself. Mm. I wouldn't weigh myself until after I ate a big breakfast. Yep. That was number one. Yep. And number two, before I took a shit, and I'm not even joking, yeah. I would weigh myself when I knew I was heaviest. That's the the mind fuck you play with yourself when it comes to I would the eat, scale. I would eat every night until I saw a higher number on the scale before I went to bed. So wow. I, used to, I used to go like, I'm on gain right now, right? Like I've got, and this is so hard for me to put size on. So before I go to bed, I've never seen 227. So I pushed to, I'm 228, yeah. And then tomorrow it's like, okay, 227.2. I'm going to eat till I see that. <laughs> like I used to do shit like yeah. that, connect uh, to that. Yeah. No, it, it, it's not effective. If you bulk up for long periods of time and cut for long periods of time, you're just going to gain lots of body fat when you bulk yep. and you're going to lose muscle. It's counterproductive. Here's the second thing you should do. Train properly this is probably the most important thing because the most overlooked it most overlooked because if you train properly if you have good exercise programming with proper frequency because body part splits don't don't hit this nearly as well as full body routines do but if you send the right signal your body will want to hold on to muscle in fact we've had countless i've had countless messages from people who did uh maps anabolic the, the the red program which is the one that people usually start with right i've had countless messages from people who they message me, hey, should I, is it okay if I start cutting while I do this? And I'll say, yeah, no problem. It's going to be a good routine. It sends a good muscle building signal. And they'll not only lose body fat, but they'll gain muscle at the same time, Mm -hmm. which is something that is supposed to be impossible, which I've seen happen many times, so I know it's bullshit. If you send the right signal, your body will maintain or build muscle while burning body fat. And if you combine it with uh, shorter periods of cutting and bulking, 
I mean, now you're in. Now you're so gold. I have to add one more piece that I think has been a game changer for almost anybody that I've taught this to is that the the way our body uh, utilizes fat as fuel. People don't really have this uh, have this like they don't totally fully grasp this and it's and it's kind of it's very complex and trying to keep it as simple as possible to understand. I, this is how I explain it to people: is like we and I. You've heard me say it on the show many many times that I'm always trying to do as as little as possible to yeah, elicit the minimum the, viable dose, right? And so when you decide you're going to make this shift, I'm going to start cutting weight, right? Or I'm going to start dropping body fat. People always go from one extreme to the other extreme, mm -hmm. and w that is so not advantageous to your goal. Like what you want to do is just make us like if you were somebody who was eating all these crazy calories and doing all this stuff, and you weren't really training consistently, and then you said, "Hey, I'm going to lose some body fat. I'm going to cut the other way." Like literally, just change a couple things. Yeah, just change a couple things and take a walk to start off with. Take them one thing at a time too. Like if it's just the the training piece, if it's just the nutri like. You have to like when you just bombard your body with all this new stimulus at once. How are you going to understand, you know, where your sweet spot is with all these things? Hundred percent. And over over applied intensity uh, intensity is the number one thing I see with people failing when they're trying to do a goal like this. Is they want to lose it, and they think that the harder they work, the cl the closer and faster they're going to get to this goal, and that it, that couldn't be further from the truth because our bodies don't work that way. And if you're in a, a caloric deficit, which you will need to be if you're going to be burning fat and you're going to be losing weight, then you're also at a place right now where your body is like just efficiently burning fat. And then if you start to push it really hard while you're in a deficit like that, that's when shit goes like, oh, shit, what's going on here? And that's where your body starts freaking out and going like, oh, and it starts to become, conserve energy because it's not sure how much more you're going to push it the next day. Oh, yeah. You want to you get into metabolic damage in a hurry. Just cut your calories dramatically, keep them down for low per long periods of time and work and out like hammer crazy. yourself. Well, and yeah, just and think, then you're going to get metabolic well, and damage. And think that's the extreme analogy, right? So I know someone's listening. They go like, well, that's not me. I don't get crazy. But okay, you may not get crazy like that to create metabolic damage, but are you on what side of the spectrum are you? Are you way closer to that side? Are you way closer to the guy that barely does anything different? You're better off being the guy who barely does something different every week barely a little bit more, barely a little bit harder, barely a little yeah. bit more. You know, that guy or girl is going to see way more than the guy or girl who's flirting with the beast mode, mm -hmm. no days off, all out, yeah. you know, go it's big a, or go it's home. A step, it's a step ladder, you know, take one, you move up one step at a time and that's how the body progresses. It doesn't progress by jumping off a cliff and landing where you want to be. That's how you cause problems. Mm-hmm. Will Aha, what are your goal food? Uh, go to you, foods. Yeah, what are your go to foods <laughs> when traveling as far as proteins, go fats, foods. and carbs are concerned? Did we talk about this with Dom? Did we get, I think we got into this a with, little bit. Didn't maybe. we get into this a little bit? And, I, and I, this is where I've, this is where I use intermittent fasting a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, my go to food is no food. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think it's a great yeah, question dude. because I think it's a challenge that I used to have for a very long time was especially being guys that need to build and build muscle. And if I don't feed my muscles, I'm going to lose my muscles. So right. that mentality, I'm always concerned, like, well, what do I, how do I get the optimal fuel when I'm flying and I'm traveling, I'm out of town? Well, how about I don't eat? Mm -hmm. How about I use that? How about Unless since it's there? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, how about since, you know, I'm flying on a plane for four hours, sitting in an airport for another hour, traveling over to here. How about I just decide like- Yeah, that's wait a, until you get good yeah, food. Yeah, this is a good day yeah. for me to apply some intermittent fasting. Like, well, well, why, let, why fight it? Well, let's say you are- you, you're ready to eat now. Like, what are some good, you know, easy foods you can find aside from having to go to a restaurant and telling them to prepare, you know, your, your particular meals? Right. Like, like, for me, I went on a long road trip. Uh, when did we all go to, to Washington the first time? It was a while was ago a while now, ago. right? It was in yeah. August, maybe? Yeah. I, um, here's what I did. I, I stopped at grocery stores and I bought, uh, for proteins and fats, I'd buy a can of sardines, or tuna fish, or they have these salad bars with olives and nuts. Um, I'd have fruit. I mean, there's a lot of things you can eat that are really convenient that you can find at almost any grocery store. Jerky. That are also very healthy. Uh, healthy, excuse me. Pro, uh, uh, jerky is another good one, although yeah. not all jerky is well, good. Well, not all are yeah. created equal. But yeah, yeah. Not, but nuts are great, man. Macado I love macadamia nuts. Like, I'll just buy some of those and just, yeah. you know, smash on some of those or some seeds. Um, nut butters are pretty good. Uh, you know, just as convenient as fast food restaurants are, uh, so are our our grocery stores. You know, you walk into a grocery store, you can see almost anything. No, and I feel like if if that is too much effort, if it's too much effort for you to go into a grocery store, too much effort for you to go to a restaurant, then you are just better off fasting. That's how I feel. I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, 
in this like, oh, I need to go through here, like to go through the drive through because back in the day, I used to think that that was going to lose muscle. But once that, once I got rid of that insecurity, once I broke through that way of thinking, to me, it's way easier. I just, to me, I think I'm, I'm, we're huge fans of, you know, intermittent fasting, but I'm also a huge fan of doing it unstructured. Like, yeah. I don't think that it needs to be like this forced thing into your routine. It's like, there will become a time and everybody, everyone who's listening to me right now, there's going to become a time in the next week when actually getting to food is inconvenient. How about you don't fight it? Yeah. How about you allow that? Because you know what? We we fucking evolved for thousands of years this way where it wasn't convenient to eat all the time. So, yeah. you know, why don't you just roll with the punches and yeah, decide I literally that's a good base time. it off of my mood? You know, like like you said, like if if hydration is something that my f- focus is on, like I, you know, I'm usually like I'm trying to include more water throughout the day because I, man, I feel like I've been. I haven't been drinking enough water and I feel like, you know, uh, it's affecting the way that I think and my energy levels, all this stuff. I start focusing on that. A lot of times that just like turns into an intermittent fasting day just because just because of the fact that that's my focus. And it feels like a lot of times when I'm when I'm hungry, it's that I'm also I'm I'm like dehydrated, Mm -hmm. you know, and so that that satiates me to a certain degree but um yeah i mean I, i'm with you on on the traveling aspect it makes things a lot more convenient because well, it's, it's it's challenging it's it's a challenge like you know you do have to 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 really plan your way around like getting quality nutrients and stuff especially on the road well how many times have you had a client who comes in and tells you what they ate and it was horrible and you say well why, why did you eat like that well i was in a meeting all day and this was the only food that they brought to the meeting right like, yeah don't and eat so, exactly <laughs> like don't you know, eat yeah they just just fast. And you know? I, to me, I don't know. There's so many things that it, it opens your eyes about yourself when you start paying attention to that. Like, mm-hmm. do I, I, why am I struggling so much not to eat the donut? You know, like, why am I having such a hard time not eating that sandwich that like that gets provided for free? Like, why do I attach myself so much to food that I feel like I'm going to die or lose muscle? And I feel like the people that I have to speak to the most right here are the bodybuilding or the like super muscle building driven people is like intermittent fasting. I mean, you even heard Lane Norton say like, oh, I would never do that. Like why? That's silly to say that. Like, why would you never do that? There's all kinds of studies that show health benefits behind yeah. it. There's tons even of times you don't fully agree with it, but you understand that there are potential health benefits for it. Why would you not even pursue it like at all? Especially when it it's fucking crazy. naturally happens in your life yeah. all the fucking time. It's There's easier. Plenty. It's actually easier. Prove, <laughs> prove to me that it does in fact, you know, like going through like an intermittent style fasted protocol that you actually lose muscle prove it yeah no it, you doing that right and then you can know the benefits for the guys that really want to build muscle like i love shattering paradigms like this with a guy who's like six meals a day you know gotta have a caloric surplus all the time and I go hey this is what we're gonna do bro we're gonna fast you know we're you're not gonna eat i'm gonna put you on a deficit for a little bit and then i'm gonna refeed you and then talk to me about how you feel you look in your performances that's it go fucking do that coach and then tell come back and tell me when you look at yourself in the mirror when you get on the scale when you lift your weights are you weaker do you look like you lost a bunch of muscle or do you feel fucking awesome but you have to break through that first Mm. i can't remember i can remember the first time i worked out fasted and i had a little bit of caffeine Mm. holy shit man Crazy I was energy, like, huh? oh, dude, yeah, I was on insane. fire when I worked out like that. I had the yeah. same experience. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for uh, for me, ser- literally, my go to foods when traveling. Sar- I know you guys hate sardines, but sardines, macadamia nuts, avocados, and fruit. Like those are my yeah, like avocados are great. Those are like my staples. Super easy. Grab them at the grocery store. Eat them in the parking lot. Throw them away in the garbage, and I'm done. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, go to mindpumpmedia.com. We got something special for you. You'll like it. Thirty days of coaching for how much? Free. Oh, is it five million? No, it's free. Free. It's not five million dollars, Justin. Whoa, it's right. actually free. It's right? Five million excessive. free dollars. It's free. Yeah. First number I thought. Mindpumpmedia.com. Also, MPTV, Mind Pump TV on YouTube. There's a new video every single day. We just hit, every damn we day. We just hit ten thousand subscribers. Yeah, we're killing it. We're killing it. And so it's it's a great channel. We've beaten uh other people. Get on there, subscribe. We we'll send you a new video every single day. You might even get two videos a day. I'm not making any promises, but let's just say we're going crazy right now. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Oh, by the way, leave us a review on iTunes. Five stars. If we like it, we'll give you a free t-shirt. Peace. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. 
Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>